For a long time, she's been talking about her experience at McDonald's. I worked at McDonald's over the French fries. It was so hot. I think I'm going to go to a McDonald's next week someplace. I'm going to go. Might not be in your, in your place. It, I'm going to go to a McDonald's, and I'm going to work the French fry job for about a half an hour. I want to see how it is. Then he'll have all the job experience that Kamala has. Kamala, Kamala, the fast food fry chef. And the Democrats say, perfect. She should be the president of the United States, the commander in chief of the U.S. Armed Forces, leader of the free world. Because they're not a very bright bunch. Got to take that into account whenever they make recommendations. She's the... uh, the Tsarina of the Cacistocracy. She is. That's not a czar. That would be sexist. She's the Tsarina of the Cacistocracy. The Tsar of the Cacistocracy is still Joe Biden, amazingly. He doesn't know what month it is. He's not sure what country he's standing in. He went to introduce the prime minister of India, India over the weekend, the empire. Had no idea. What am I supposed to angry? He's he's growling and spitting mad, crazy old coot. He's a coot, among other things. It's one of the things you can call him on the radio and it's still okay. Amazing stuff. And his wife took over the cabinet meeting, first cabinet meeting in about a year. And uh, the first lady took over and they put her signature on the, you see this, they put her signature below the the White House seal, the presidential seal, uh, on the folders they gave to the uh, cabinet members and participants. They got Joe Biden's signature and then the first lady's signature. But she's sitting at the head of the table where the president ought to be sitting but isn't because... You know, his brain, she's no good. She's a broke, that brain of his. She's a broke, a real good. She's no good at all. And uh, Joe Biden, why is he even still living in the White House? He he should have been driven out long ago. Oh, yeah, it's because we're a third world country, because the left is here. For how long have I been warning about this, Michael? For a great many years. When the left shows up, the third world follows They bring the third world in their draft. And uh, the Democrat Party, they are the left. And the left brings the third world. That's why, you know, uh, people are shooting at uh, political leaders and riots in the streets and the mayhem and the looting and the arson and the attacks on the police. And, you know, the left is here. Crime is skyrocketing, but they tell us that it's down. Very third world, classic third world stuff. No, really, the FBI says, oh, crime is way down. But everybody knows it's different to walk out your front door today. And that doesn't mean that it's better. It's a different bad, not different good to walk out your front door because of all the Democrats and their like their Venezuelan gang member friends. Oh, uh, yeah. Speaking of which, talked about this a little bit yesterday because we had a wonderful caller uh, that brought it up. Venezuelan gang members in Chicago and I, well, I, Venezuelan gangs, because, as you know, when you have more than a few gang members. You have the gang, right? And so we got these uh, Venezuelan gangs in Chicago, and they're taking on the Chicago gangs. And I'm rooting for the Chicago gangs. I want the, should should we have uh, like a a fundraiser of some kind, ammo for Chicago gangs? I normally wouldn't do that. But now that the Venezuelan gangs are horning in on their action, I am for the Chicago gangs. I want to see, you know, I mentioned yesterday, it's kind of like the old Iran-Iraq war scenario when Iran attacked Iraq way back when in the Saddam Hussein days. And then it was like, hmm, huh, God, who do you root for here? Uh, and and this is uh, might be a little bit of the same thing, but uh, but maybe ammo for Chicago gangs for the first time. I wouldn't uh, ordinarily say, you know what, the gangs in Chicago need more ammo. But, but now that the Venezuelan gangs are moving in in Chicago, a little bit different. And we've got an update for you on that. We've got uh, the pastor and we've got the mother whose son was murdered in gang warfare and violent crime and her nephew murdered in uh, violent crime in Chicago because Democrats run the place and the schools failed. 
Uh, but they, they, they have, well, not completely. They still have the school to prison pipeline that the Democrat Party created because, you know, they're not good. They're not good at this uh, amazing stuff. Governing is really not their bag, the Democrats. But we got that going. Also, did you see, uh, speaking of Venezuelan gangs, did you see the video that has now re-emerged, re-emerged of Kamala Harris in Los Angeles, California? Los Angeles, California. Kamala was out there in 2018, and she's chanting in the street and dancing because it's all a dance party when it comes to more murder and gang activity. When the left is in charge, murder is a part of the program. They, you know, they murdered 100 million people in the last century, and it was only 100 years long. The, uh, the Democrats, you got to remind Democrats, century, they don't know about this scent stuff and all that, but never mind that. So Kamala dancing in the streets. Well, I'll be dancing, uh, dancing in the streets. And she is uh, chanting, uh, no, no to uh, deportation, uh, CC to Venezuelan gangs. Is that what she's uh, chanting there, dancing? Um, down, down with <clears throat> deportation, uh, up, up with uh, inflated fake grain, grade point averages, I think is what she was chanting, something like that. But uh, she's... She, but now everything she was against, she's for, and everything she was for, she's now against. And the news media applauds, and they say, isn't that great? She's evolving at an incredibly rapid rate of speed. Not that it's all a big lie and that she's a complete fa- fraud and a phony. It's that she's evolving. Remember when, like, uh, Barack Obama evolved when he said that uh, as a Christian— he believed that be, uh, marriage was between a man and a woman and only between a man and a woman. And then the fundraising dried up from the LGBTQIA and plus, and, and the plus is money, as it turns out. That's it. It's uh, money to the Democrats. And when the money dried up from the LG, then um, uh, that's not just a TV set anymore. The LG, and really, if you're L, aren't you also G? Come on. If you're B, aren't you really G? Huh? T is another thing altogether. But but uh, so when he saw the money was drying up, the fundraising money, then he said, oh, no, you know, that whole Christian thing, that's gone to the back burner because now I'm for fundraising. And now a marriage is between any two people that can stand anywhere. And that's just fine. Just great stuff. So uh, they evolve. Democrats evolve. They don't flip flop. I know I read it in The New York Times and The Washington Post. I was speaking of which yesterday I shared with you the weather in the Washington Post, which was funny. And today I looked at it again. I didn't normally look at it, but yesterday my best girl pointed it out. And it was so funny yesterday <laughs> that, uh, that I looked at it again today. I looked at the weather again today because I figured yesterday the Washington Post was so completely ridiculous in their weather thing that uh, I should take a look at it again today. And sure enough, today, here it is. Today, the weather, it's uh, raining here in Washington, uh, D.C., our nation's capital. So you got a little black cloud with raindrops falling. And then 70, 70 degrees is the high. But what's the feels like temperature, Michael? Because the high is 70 degrees, which is not very warm, but it's fine. 70 degrees, but it feels like, feels like 68. So plan accordingly, dress accordingly. Don't act like it's 70 degrees because it's going to feel like 68 degrees, even though it's 70 degrees. But I thought that the whole temperature, the whole point of taking the temperature is to tell you how it feels. So if it's going to feel like 68, then isn't it actually 68 degrees? Isn't 70 the fake temperature, but the feels like is the real temperature? They've changed all that. And they got this predicted for the rest of the week, too. It's kind of amazing. They can predict it all the way out to Sunday. On Sunday, it's going to be partly sunny. This is what they say in the Washington Post. Can't believe a stinking thing, they say, because they lie about everything, including the weather. And they politicize the weather because they're Democrats, and the Democrats have politicized everything from gender to babies to all forms of sex, including animals and things like that. And, of course, the weather and the temperature, they politicized it all. But uh, looking forward to Sunday, it's going to be 78 degrees, but it's going to feel like 77 Maybe 77 and a half, but that's it. It's going to feel like 77 or 77 and a half, but it's going to be 78. So just uh, keep your ear to the ground on that. Keep your eyes peeled because really remarkable stuff. This is uh, the politics of everything because these people, 
Can I just say these people? I Sometimes I prefer those people because I don't want to be. Did you see, uh, see uh, Vladimir Zelensky? He's in the United States now. He's, uh, he's gathering up cash because that's what he does. Yeah, yesterday it was 73 degrees, but it felt like 74. I barely noticed. I barely noticed the difference. But today it could be greater because today it's 70 degrees, but it's going to feel like 68. That's a... Uh, that's a uh, uh, Jasmine's already freezing. She's uh, shaking, quivering, quivering there. Whatever it is in the studio, you can hang meat in the studio. It's uh, usually kind of nippy in here. Can you say nippy? Can you still say nippy? Because that uh, that has to do uh, with some other things too. Amazing. So that's your uh, get your weather from the Washington Post. You know, you just never know. Also on the front page, it says we hate the Jews. That's their headline. We hate the Jews. Kind of weird. Israel pounds Lebanon as conflict widens. But wait a minute. Lebanon is firing hundreds and hundreds of rockets into Israel in an effort to kill children and stuff. The Israelis are sending out warning, warnings to get away from the stuff they're about to blow up. And instead, what these Lebanese people do is they, they tie their children to the radiators so they get blown up. And they just like having children tied to radiators. Kind of an old, an old tradition. So, yeah, it uh, turns out this whole thing in the Middle East, it's the fault of the Jews. Kind of funny. I don't think that's the case, but they do it, uh, they do it the Washington Post. They, it's all the Jews. Pretty amazing stuff. And a funny uh, political cartoon that has Rashida Tlaib and lots of other jihad-oriented Democrats who really hate the Jews, not just, you know, hyperbolic hatred of Jews or you know, uh, uh, rhetorical hatred, but uh, genuine, authentic hatred of Jews like Rashida Tlaib, who's a jihadi. And a fun cartoon, a fun, by Payne, Payne, P-A-Y-N-E. And uh, it's a fun cartoon. It's got Rashida Tlaib sitting at a congressional desk with her name plaque on it. And there's a pager on her desk, and the pager blows up. There's like a little mushroom cloud coming out of her pager. And she looks shocked and says, odd, my pager just exploded. See? Right, and that's the cartoon of the day. And that has Rashida Tlaib really upset. <clears throat> you know, Rashida, you, you spend your adult lifetime being a virulent anti-Semite and supporting genocidal murderers, and someday you might get a reputation. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, it's uh, kind of sad that I have to be the one to fill you in on this, but, but when you're a Democrat, I guess it's, uh, they're a little slow. They're kind of slow to learn, the, uh, the Democrats, the left, but they'll... You know, they'll murder everybody before they're done. And National Review posted the uh, the cartoon, not originally a National car- uh, uh, Review cartoon, cartoon, but National Review posted it. And that has the Democrats really upset. And you'll never guess. What are they calling people, Michael? What are they call them? They're calling people racist. They're racist because it turns out Islam is a race. Did you know that? I have to keep relearning that over and over again because they... They got it's a race, and uh, yeah, it is. Turns out it's a race. It's a race to death. It's a race to the end. It's a race to apocalypse, uh, and uh, that's different than the race you were thinking of. I think, isn't it? Yeah. So the cartoon of the day is uh, odd. My pager exploded, and she's very upset, and she's calling everybody racist. You know, you're racist if you want to uh, perpetrate genocide against a nation of people like the Jewish people, the Israeli people. That's racist. You're a racist, Rashida Tlaib. I'm here. See, I, uh, English is my first language. It's uh, practically my only only language. But you know, I'm. But I do English muy bien. Uh, so that's that's pretty good, and uh, and I'm happy about that. Rashida Tlaib, she's almost funny. She's a little bit funny. Amazing stuff. Uh, and also, yeah, did you see? Did you see in Pennsylvania yesterday, Volodymyr Zelensky? He's in town. There's a big war going on, about a million dead. Uh, there are no uh, protests on campuses to say, you know, uh, cease fire now or uh, release the hostages. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, they don't care about the hostages on campus, do they? They just hate the Jews because Rashida Tlaib, they should be wearing armbands and goose-stepping, shouldn't they, clicking their heels three times. When they click their heels three times, they end up burning in the pits of hell, the fiery pits of hell. Uh, but... Volodymyr Zelensky went to uh, Pennsylvania and he met with the Democrat governor there who was almost vice president, Josh Shapiro. They couldn't pick him because he's a Jew. He's a Jew, so the Democrats couldn't pick him. 
But uh, they got Josh Shapiro signing uh, love notes on uh, on artillery rounds on on uh, these, and they're all smiling and having a nice time because the Democrat Party is the party of the military-industrial complex and of war. There, there was no war under Donald Trump, and that's why they can't allow him in, can't allow Donald Trump back in the White House because no war under Donald Trump. Joe Biden wore all over the damn place. And they're smiling and signing warheads over here. All right, artillery uh, rounds. And uh, and there's Volodymyr Zelensky. He's smiling. He's a billionaire. He's very comfortable. He feels good. And he's in Pennsylvania, so he's looking for a date. You know, it's Democrat world. We're just living in it. We're at 888-630-9625. I wonder, where's uh, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky staying tonight? Does he have a nice nice room somewhere? Got the presidential suite, the dictator suite. Where is he staying? He's got, he's at the Four Seasons in the dictator suite. That's good. The billionaire dictator uh, suite. All right, let's go to the uh, telephones. Let's go to Greg calling from Rockville, Maryland. Gregory, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hello, Chris. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. Love your show as always. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say, like with Ukraine and Zelensky, what you're bringing up, it's like, I believe we've spent close to over 200 billion. If we look at, I mean, I know it's ammunitions and other things, but it's 200 billion, and he's coming here to try to pine for more money. We know the government, so-called government, shut down. Although we know the speaker's punting on that, so. I mean, he's asking for he's going to ask for more money. You know, that's not going to stop this year, especially if Kamala is elected. So we're looking at like pretty much half a trillion potentially to Ukraine, a nation thousands of miles away fighting over two eastern Russian speaking provinces, half a trillion dollars in basically three to four years. I mean, that's just my prediction. I wonder what you think. Oh, I think you're 100 percent right. And, you know, uh, what do you what do you think the end game is here, Greg? What do you where does this end? I was going to ask you that because I don't know. They've never stated what the goal is. Uh-huh. Obviously, you know we don't want you. We don't want Ukraine to be just savaged. But if they're fighting over provinces that literally want to break away, they speak Russian and have been fighting a civil war there for about dang near twenty years. I don't see why Americans need to be. You know why we need to expend our blood and treasure for that. I just don't. I don't understand it. It, it, it drives me insane. I know a lot of people, grassroots on the ground feel the same way and uh yeah i mean uh, he's meddling in our elections just like you said calling out trump and vance i hope they hope they you know end this charade when they're elected yeah campaigning for kamala is Zelensky on the u.s taxpayer dime and the war is the never-ending war the military industrial complex loves it and that's where the democrats come in You know, the Democrat Party is and has long been the party of war, of warfare, of the military-industrial complex. The uh, great classic American presidential speech about the military-industrial complex was delivered by whom? By whom? Huh? Who gave that? Dwight Eisenhower. Dwight David Eisenhower gave the military-industrial complex speech. The supreme commander of Allied forces in Europe in World War II, smashing the Socialist Workers' Party of Adolf Hitler. Uh, It's not like the Democrat Party. It's really, it's not like they have any history with this, unless you count, well, the American Civil War. They got us into the American Civil War because they broke away, created the Confederate States of America and Jefferson Davis. So there's that. They got us into that. And then uh, Woodrow Wilson, the racist, segregationist, Democrat, progressive, uh, got us into World War I, the war to end all wars. And it was uh, another uh, 20 years-ish until, uh, you know, Franklin Delano Roosevelt got us into World War II, and then he died in office uh, during the war. And Harry Truman took over, dropped two atomic bombs on the Japanese. You know, the, the Democrats put all the Japanese Americans, including a lot of American citizens, in uh, prison camps in the United States because, you know, they were defending democracy. They were saving democracy. And Harry Truman got us into the Korean War, got us in the Korean War. And John F. Kennedy and and really big time uh, LBJ, the Vietnam War. Um, but other than the Civil War, World War One, World War II, the Korean War and the Vietnam War, really what kind of a history does the Democrat Party have with warfare? President Trump, four years of peace and music, it was like Woodstock. 
you know, don't take the brown acid. The uh, the uh, honestly, the Democrat Party in their history with warfare. And now Joe Biden got us in up to our eyeballs. Uh, the uh, war between Russia and Ukraine, because, you know, these two provinces in Ukraine, very important to the American people. Now, again, Volodymyr Zelensky visiting the United States. And what's he here for? What's he here for, Michael? He's looking for another $375 million from us, a military aid package. How much of that will go into his family's accounts, do you think? Because I wonder if there's any room left in the bulging bank accounts of the Zelensky family. Hard to say for sure, and many of his allies. Zelensky says he's here to present his victory plan. Hey, wait a minute. Why didn't I think of that? Does that end with uh, columns of Ukrainian tanks rolling into Red Square, taking over the Kremlin and the defense ministry, St. Basil's? You know, does, is that right there in Red Square? Uh, is that when the, the war comes to an end, when Russia is defeated, even though Hitler's armies couldn't do that and Napoleon's armies couldn't do that? Maybe Ukraine, maybe Volodymyr Zelensky, the little actor fella, maybe he's the one that can finally pull this off. So amazing stuff. And uh, he went and visited Pennsylvania, an artillery factory. There's a factory where we make artillery uh, munitions. And uh, the Pennsylvania governor, Josh Shapiro, who couldn't be selected by Kamala Harris to be her running mate, even though they thought he'd be better. But he's a Jew, and too many Democrats hate the Jews, and that's why they couldn't pick him, even though they thought he'd be a better pick. And it's the only state that matters in the election is Pennsylvania. It's a key swing state. And when they say key swing state, they don't just mean wife swapping anymore, because now it's about a lot more than that. It's about power. And so Josh Shapiro, the Democrat ineligible on account of Jewish. And uh, he's there smiling with Volodymyr Zelensky, signing signing with a, uh, a Sharpie. as a little plug for the Sharpie people there. With a Sharpie, he's signing a nice note on to an artillery shell, which reminds me of Iran signing warheads and writing messages on warheads of their ballistic missiles. We will kill you, a Jewish dog, infidel pig. Uh, uh, death to the great Satan. They love death to the great Satan. And then the little Satan is Israel. Israel is the little Satan. We're the big Satan, though, because... And uh, they're really talking about the Democrats when they, they say the great Satan. But uh, there's, so there's uh, Josh Shapiro signing with a, a Sharpie, signing a nice note. Does anybody tell us what's in the note? I don't think anybody, because journalism is dead. Otherwise, they'd tell us what he wrote on the uh, on the munition here on the artillery shell and everybody claps when they he signs a nice note and then people clap and they're doing handshakes with Zelensky and everybody's smiling and they got this whole thing oh Pennsylvania and Josh Shapiro is saying Pennsylvania is the arsenal of democracy now the United States is the arsenal of democracy and it has been since World War II at least and um, you know it's not Pennsylvania you can't just say that's like oh and Pennsylvania is the land of the free and the home of the brave yeah, well, it's Pennsylvania. It's the Keystone State and all that. We must do our part to fight for freedom from the workers in Scranton. They're workers. They always use that Soviet language. Who make Pennsylvania the arsenal of democracy to the brave Ukrainian soldiers protecting their country, said Josh Shapiro. Why did he speak with that accent? Why did Josh Shapiro speak with that accent? That's kind of weird, I think. But he did. And... Zelensky is currently in the United States presenting his victory plan, his victory plan. Comes to the United States. Uh, United States, we're set to provide him with another $375 million in a military aid package. And there's not a college kid in America that's uh, pounding the, the table and saying, stop the war in uh, Ukraine, stop the war in Russia. Why is that? They got almost a million dead there. You got like 12 dead in the Gaza, 12 people, I think. And, and here you got almost a million dead. It's the old, uh, it's the old uh, Stalin thing. A single death is a tragedy. A million deaths are a statistic. That's what the communists say, and that's uh, the Democrats, too, because they're just like that as well. Amazing stuff. It's a million deaths. Uh, it's, uh, it's like, you know, they're very upset. They're pounding the table over abortion. Last year, there were more than a million abortions in the United States of America, more than a million. That's, that's a pretty big number when you're talking about helpless little people 
Uh, and then they're yelling about genocide in the Gaza, where maybe 40,000 people have been killed uh, for attacking their neighbors, a uh, far superior neighbor, technologically, culturally, economically, every imaginable way, uh, superior culture. They attack them and they're losing. Pretty amazing stuff, I got to say. And then Volodymyr Zelensky sat down and did an interview, did an interview because the news media wants to give him a tongue bath, even though he's kind of a hairy Eastern European guy, kind of a short, hairy Eastern European guy. They want to give him a tongue bath, which you might think is a little weird, but they don't because they got different things going on there. And he's campaigning. Now, again, they turned into a campaign stop, the Democrat governor signing artillery shells with happy notes that will be rained down on on what would be innocent people if they were only jihadis. Then the news media would say all these Russians were innocent. Isn't it fascinating how none of the Russians are innocent, but all the Hamas people and the Hezbollah are innocent? And none of the Russians are innocent. Huh, how can that be? Oh, yeah, they're white. I think that pretty much sums it up. But uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, he, uh, he sat down, he did an interview. And in the interview, after having his photo op with the Democrat governor, Josh Shapiro, uh, and uh, signing artillery shells and having a happy photo op because uh, they love raining death down on the world. And then uh, Volodymyr Zelensky sat down and he said that J.D. Vance is too radical. Uh, I got an idea. Get the hell out of my country and go back and make your own artillery rounds. How about that? Pip squeak. Uh, how about that? Just amazing. Zelensky called J.D. Vance, quote, too radical, end quote, and recommended he, quote, read up on history of the Second World War. Well, because you guys are ushering in the Third World War, the Democrats and Volodymyr Zelensky. Amazing stuff. So the Ukrainian president criticized Senator J.D. Vance as being too radical in a New Yorker interview. Trump's running mate has accused Ukraine of corruption. That's because they're famously and notoriously corrupt and they've been funneling millions to the Biden family. And now they got hundreds of billions in return, the return on investment that uh, they've gotten with giving millions to the Biden family really paying off like nobody's business. I got to tell you, invest in whatever Volodymyr Zelensky is investing in. Zelensky warned Vance's stance could lead to global conflict Unlike what's happening now, I guess, huh? Pip squeak. Go home and make your own damn artillery shells. And he urged him to study World War II. Uh, shove it. How about that? Um, he's a uh, uh, the author of a New York Times bestselling book. He uh, came from modest and humble beginnings uh, through the Ivy League, the United States Senate. I guess he's doing all right, but thanks, Vlad. You can, uh, I know it's funny, he's Volodymyr. Volodymyr, it's a variation of Vladimir, though. And uh, criticized, do you come to the United States and you criticize the uh, U.S. Senator, J.D. Vance, and you say he's too radical? I got an idea. Uh, Stop the war. How about that, pipsqueak, hairy little furball? Um, Take your beep and uh, beep it. How about that? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah. He called Vance's position uh, a message because J.D. Vance actually is a U.S. senator who uh, is uh, entitled to say whatever the hell he wants, you you little Ukrainian dwarf. Uh, So we got that. Zelensky took issue with former President Donald Trump's running mate's approach to the war in Ukraine, accusing him of advocating for a war-torn country to, quote, give up our territories, end quote. Um, well, uh, what's your plan for victory? You're rolling tanks into Red Square sometime real soon? Because, you know, there is a spot just outside of Moscow where Napoleon's army was stopped, and, and very close to that, that's where Hitler's army was stopped. So what's your end game? What's your winning position here? And why is there no one, like our Secretary of State or our State Department, why is no one in the middle of peace talks in this war that is going to hit a one million dead mark soon. And shortly before Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine back in February of 2022, that's before the war even started, J.D. Vance said, I got to be honest with you. I don't really care what happens to Ukraine one way or another. Now, uh, that that's, uh, you know, gosh, 
um, hundreds and hundreds of millions, nay, billions of people around the world would say exactly the same thing. But the war machine, and Joe Biden is a puppet of the war machine of the, you know, of the, the military industrial complex and all that stuff. So uh, Joe Biden and the Democrats, they love death more than we love life. They've adopted the slogan of Al Qaeda because that's who they are. It's what they've become. And, and I'm sorry, uh, Zelensky, you've got the audacity to come to the United States and vacuum up hundreds of millions more for your endless war uh, with your fake lip service to your plan for victory. I'll look forward to, to hearing that plan for victory. How are you going to smash the, what, the largest country in the world and uh, a commie running the place? They've got uh, one thing, and that's munitions, tanks, and bombs. That's what they have. Zelensky said he doesn't take Vance's words seriously. Well, you should. He's a member of the Senate, and he might be vice president. In fact, he may very well be vice president very soon. Uh, uh, Uh-uh-uh. Yes, sir. That approach would broadcast to the world the following implicit rule. I came, I conquered, now this is mine, he said. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, kind of a, a butchery of uh, I came, I saw, I conquered. I remember Hillary Clinton saying that after, after uh, Libya collapsed and they, uh, the people murdered Muammar Gaddafi. I remember that, too. So uh, there it is, Zelensky, uh, you know, uh, honestly. And now you're campaigning for the Democrats. He's here on a campaign stop. We're going to have to have to take that into account, I think. He is a political operative of the Democrat Party because of the hundreds of billions for the war machine. Now, how many houses and cars and boats have members of the Volodymyr Zelensky family bought since we started funneling money to them? Just curious. Anybody have an answer to that? Let's uh, grab a phone call. Um, I don't think I like this guy. You know, Volodymyr Zelensky. Let's go to uh, Tom calling from Lorton, Virginia. Lorton. Tom, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris, you cracked me up. <laughs> you, <laughs> you took a couple of my talking points here. Uh, but remember the prosecutor uh, from Ukraine, the one that Joe Biden famously helped get fired? I do. Uh, I heard that there was, yeah, I, no one else does in the media, though, so it's kind of oh, weird. True. But there was uh, a discussion that there was 12 recordings between uh, him and Joe Biden that have still never come out. And then it also makes you wonder what else Ukraine has to have Joe Biden under their thumbs so hard. Because uh, remember the laptop, uh, all the money that Hunter was getting, the big guy and all those things. So I I think that there's more, there's some there there. Uh, And then lastly, uh, if you wanted to, I think it'd be great. Uh, there's a Trump Tilla boat parade this weekend on the river uh, in D.C. We're all going up there to DC, uh, D.C. in our Trump boats. If you and your best girl wanted to join me, you guys are welcome aboard my boat. Uh, we are planning on being there for the uh, for the Trump uh, boat parade. Our uh, Vince Colonnese's producer Corey has a uh, pontoon boat. Uh, you may have seen it with giant Trump flags and and uh, all kinds of uh, fun stuff. Uh, and he counts the number of people that flip him off. But this weekend, it's it's Sunday, right? It is. Yeah, we're meeting at, uh, well, around noon is when we go past the uh, Woodrow Wilson. And then we're going up to D.C., get some fingers pointed at us, uh, laugh, take pictures. <laughs> some and fingers go back. pointed at us. That is great. Yeah, we're planning on being there. I'm, I, I, I appreciate the, the invitation very much. Look for us on a uh, pontoon boat because we're going to be with Corey. This is our plan. Uh, you know, barring unforeseen events, we're planning on being there for the uh, the Trump boat flotilla on the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. this weekend. Uh, and it uh, it promises to be a riot. We've been out there with Corey before, and it's hilarious. He has the huge Trump flags, gigantic Trump flags on his boat. And he does it just to count the people that flip him off. And he waves and smiles, and we all laugh and drink beer and have a good time and talk to the nice police on the police boats all over the place. It's it's wonderful. It's a little slice of America in the midst of this 
hotbed of crime and mental illness that the Democrats call home. Of course, I call it home, too. Tom, thank you very much. Uh, Great call, and thank you for the invitation. Yeah, you know, uh, Miranda Devine, the wonderful uh, Miranda Devine, an actual news reporter at the New York Post, has a new book coming out. Her new book about Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and the corruption. And the title of the book is The Big Guy, The Big Guy. And Michael Pierce and I were just talking about this. And I said, you could hold up the book, The Big Guy, and tell everybody in the newsroom at the Washington Post or the New York Times, say, hey, there's a book out. It's called The Big Guy. They wouldn't get the reference. They wouldn't know what you're talking about. That in the emails, Joe Biden is the big guy, and he gets 10%, 10% cut of the money. And the Congress investigated found that the Biden family took in, what, like $27 million in ill-gotten gains. And in our corrupt country, because our filthy, corrupt news media, it's not even an issue, not even a news story. Democrats, hacks. All right, let's grab a, a phone call. Let's go to, let's go to Marty calling from Wisconsin. You're a dairy state. Marty, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris, thanks for taking my call. I you got a bet. question for you. And I, I, yes, I sir. I'd like to get your opinion on it. Uh-huh. What, Putin's one of the best guys in the world. He'll take out whoever he wants to take out. Why hasn't he taken out Zelensky yet? The war would be over. Well, it's a perfectly good question. Why has Volodymyr Zelensky, who who enjoys uh, knocking planes out of the sky when his enemies are aboard the plane, who enjoys, you know, having women shot in the elevators of their their um, apartment buildings in Moscow if they say something bad about him, uh, slips polonium-210, a highly radioactive isotope, into your soup or your, your coffee and kills you slowly over time. Why hasn't he killed Volodymyr Zelensky? That's a great question, because you figure... Uh, Putin's pretty good at killing, right? Yeah. I yeah. Mean, he pretty much kills whoever he wants dead. Yeah, and why hasn't he killed Zelensky? Uh, I got to tell you, the world is filled with uh, bizarro mysteries, and you've identified yet another one. 